Murphy here. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune into my teaching. Today I'm going to continue my discussion on sonship and I want to highlight a little bit on the subject of the believer's authority. So let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that everybody watching us would be edified and that they would be built up in you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor in your most holy, precious name. Amen. So in talking about the believer's authority, I want to point out a few things because in Christianity, as we know, there are often a lot of extremes that exist with different doctrinal areas. And the key thing is we always want to stay balanced. And how do we stay balanced? We stay balanced with the Word of God. And with the believer's authority, you'll see different people and certain hyper movements that take things to an extreme. You know, they take a truth, but they go too far with it for whatever reason. We have to let the Word of God, guys, we have to let the Word of God keep us guarded from getting into an extreme one way or the other. We don't want to veer off into a ditch somewhere. So, one of the passages I want to point out here is in Luke chapter 10, if you would turn there, I'm going to read out in the New Living Translation, but one of the things to point out with the believer's authority is it is not about us. And, you know, so many people talk about the believer's authority, and they do so almost in a prideful or self-centered way. When we're talking about the believer's authority, the believer walking in the authority that Jesus Christ gave us, the church, we must do it in a Christ-centered way, with Christ-centered modes, with God-centered modes. It is not about us building our own kingdom. It is about us building the kingdom of God. It is about us being humble servants to the king, being willing to do what he leads us to do with what he has sovereignly gifted every single person to do. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus says, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. You know, Jesus is saying that he has given the church all authority over the power of the enemy. And realize this, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, and the third day he rose victorious over death. And he ascended later on and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And it says, Paul writes, that believers are seated in heavenly places with him. Realize we have authority. And Jesus, this was spoken by Jesus to his disciples. In chapter 10 of Luke, this was way prior to the cross. This was prior to the cross. So just imagine how much more that means for us today as believers. And you know, when we talk about the believer's authority, we, we must use common sense. We must not go to some extreme as certain movements have done so. And you know, walking in the believer's authority means that we inherit the name of Jesus Christ and we can use it to bring glory to the Father. And you know, one of the important things here is in first john first john chapter four in verse four says but you belong to god my dear children you have already won victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world you know realize this you know every believer can walk with peace can walk with authority in a Christ-centered way, with biblical boldness. And, you know, there's a difference between biblical boldness and pride, because there's a lot of people that take this and they start walking in pride. We don't want to walk in pride. We don't want to have an ego about us because of our authority. We want to have what is biblical boldness, which is what the early church operated under. That's what the early church had. They had boldness. They had a holy boldness, not boldness as the world defines it but a boldness that is biblical, that is led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know, the early church, you know, they continued pressing forward despite difficulties. They continued pressing forward despite persecution. It's so vitally important that we realize and understand that. And, you know, 
we must live through life knowing that we are indwelled by the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit, and he goes with us everywhere we go. He is our helper. He is our teacher. He is our tutor. You know, he is always there with us. You know, so many people think, you know, only they can experience God's presence when they're in church, when they're in the Bible. But the news is you can experience him. You can, he is always with you through it all in life through the mundane task of lives. Um, you know, when you're doing your daily chores, he is with you. And, you know, you can walk forward in life knowing that if you are walking with God, if you are following God's plan for your life, that he will provide for you every step of the way. He will give you authority every step of the way. That doesn't mean you're not going to have problems, that you're not going to have trials, because Jesus even said to his disciples, be of good cheer. You will have trials and tribulations. So it's it's so vitally important that we understand these things in, in the church because we really need to walk as the early church walked. Um, you know, the early church wasn't moved by resistance. The early church wasn't moved by persecution. They walked in the believer's authority. And, you know, they saw many powerful things take place. Um, you know, just think of this. Look, whenever um, Paul and Silas, I believe, were prisoned. Just look when they were imprisoned. They sang and God moved and they were set free from that jail. In the book of Acts, that is so vitally important that we understand that. That, you know, there is, that there is power when we trust in the Lord, when we have faith. And again, faith, that's on to my other point here, faith is an important aspect here in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith shows us the re reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So, you know, living a lifestyle of faith is, you know, living knowing, you know, you have the circumstance in front of you. And you believe God for a change, whatever that situation is, according to his word, according to his sovereign will, which is revealed in his word, you believe and trust God. You believe and trust God. And, you know, we see in Hebrews 11, the Hebrews Hall of Faith, all of these people God used mightily in the Old Testament, they had their own imperfections. They were not perfect. They had their own shortcomings. But they took hold of the promises of God and mixed it with faith. You know, it's just one thing to just say, yeah, I agree with the promises of God. I agree that God can do this and can do that. But you have to mix it with faith. You have to really believe in your heart of hearts that God can do these things. We need to partner with the Word of God. Our prayers, our prayers must be led, must be led by the Word of God. That's so important we understand. So, you know, my challenge to you today as you walk in, you know, growing in sonship, which again, as I said in other teachings, sonship is being more and more led by the Spirit of God. And as you're led by the Spirit of God, you are shown your identity in Christ. You're shown who you are in Jesus Christ through the power of the new birth, through the power of having a changed life, because true conversion always produces genuine fruit that is in line with the scriptures. So, you know, as you walk this walk of sonship, which is, you know, it really goes hand in hand with discipleship, because true discipleship should be producing sons and daughters of the Most High God, people who are not led by the desires of the flesh, not led by the carnality of the world, but people that are led by the Holy Spirit, led by the fruit of the Spirit, led by the fruit of their newborn spirit in Jesus Christ to glorify God. The more we walk in that, the more we will walk in our authority that is given to us as believers. As believers. So, you know, it has to all be founded upon the Word of God. It has to be all founded upon the Word of God. And that's all I have for this short teaching. I hope this has blessed you and encouraged you. Let me close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to have shared your Word, Lord, over social media, Lord. I pray, Lord, that everybody watching this is edified and built up in you, Lord Jesus, for your glory. In your most holy and precious name, I pray these things. Amen. Once again. God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in, and have a great week. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and share us with others. 
Okay, and if you would like to learn more about me and check out my other teachings as well as blog posts, you can go to my website, steadfast-etm.com. I post on there regularly, and you can also subscribe to a newsletter. There is a page there to look at missionaries. I would encourage you to donate to as well, as well as other links to other teachers of the Word of God that I personally follow myself and I encourage you to follow as well and there's some other resources on there for Christian living and studying the Word of God. Additionally, I have a devotional available on the fruits of the Spirit. The print version is currently $7 and the ebook version is $2. I highly encourage you to check that out. It is a very um, fundamental teaching and it's very easily laid out for you to understand and apply to your life. Also, I would like to encourage you to pray for CMI Global. I'm a part of that ministry fellowship there. I'm credentialed through them, and CMI Global is a ministry fellowship that helps equip and establish and strengthen the local church. So please join me in praying for leadership as well as provision and blessing for all the other ministers and churches within CMI Global and the website uh, cmiglobal.info is available for more information or if you would like to donate to them. I'd also like to talk to you about the School of Discipleship through endurehardship.org slash SOD which is where you can check it out. I attended this program, and I'll be a graduate of this two-year program as of May, at the end of May 2023. If you are looking for sound Christian teaching and discipleship, I highly encourage you to check this program. You can do it from anywhere. They do weekly Zoom meetings for you. If you enroll in the teachings are awesome. Um, they will help strengthen your walk with the Lord and help you build a lifestyle of discipleship, which is very important. This is for anybody, whether or not you want to be in ministry or not. I believe this is crucial for any Christian. There is just so much given in this school here. It has touched my life, and I know it has touched others, and it's uh, led by Dr. J.P. Price. You can find out more about this school here. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's very affordable, very reasonable. Again, I would highly encourage you to check this out, and I'm sure it will be a blessing for you as well, and share it with others. You might know somebody that wants to go through discipleship or go through some training to be better prepared for ministry. This is the place to do it at, and they def Dr. J.P. Price and the other instructors with this program do a very good job of pouring into all the students I know has helped me, and I trust it will also help others and be a blessing to others, and God is definitely using this program here.